Frequently on my channel, I see comments like this. So let's look at how Muslims come to the popular conclusion that Rebecca was three years old when Isaac married her. This is from Discover the Truth. I've annotated their assumptions in red. Some facts on what we have so far, skipping down to number three. The incident on Mount Moriah and the birth of Rebecca happened at the same time, assumption, when Isaac was about 36 years old, assumption, same time when Sarah died, assumption. The verses all looked together tells us that Isaac was 37 years old when Rebecca was born. Assumption carried forward. Now we're going to talk about what the data actually say. Let's look at the first assumption. The incident on Mount Moriah, Genesis 22, and the birth of Rebecca happened at the same time. The only temporal indicators were given in the biblical text are the phrases, after these things. But as commentators rightly note, this phrase is simply to situate a pericope into the larger context. It's also used as a general indication of when an incident took place, and it has an indefinite connection with foregoing events. The phrase simply doesn't give us a specific indication of time, but let's look at how Muslims want to read Genesis 22 and 23. We can have some fun with this. Now, immediately after these things, that is the binding of Isaac and Abraham and his men going to Beersheba, it was immediately told to Abraham, Behold, Milcah has borne several children to your brother, Nahor, in immediate succession. And then it names the children, and Bethuel immediately fathered Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother, and Abraham got word of this immediately after it happened. And Sarah died immediately after, when she was 127 years old. This understanding has no basis in the text whatsoever. Additionally, the theory that the phrase, after these things, means that the events happened immediately after each other is self-defeating, because back in Genesis 21, Isaac is weaned. So he's about three years old. Genesis 22 is the binding of Isaac. What joins Genesis 21 and Genesis 22? The same phrase, after these things which, according to Muslim logic, must mean Genesis 22 immediately follows Genesis 21 chronologically, which would make Isaac about three years old in Genesis 22 as well. However, this conflicts with the assumption we saw earlier that says Isaac was about 36. So now Muslims have to tell us why the phrase, after these things, does not mean immediately at the beginning of Genesis 22, but it does at the end. Otherwise, they're just being inconsistent. Now, according to rabbinic tradition, Sarah does die in Genesis 23 immediately following the events in Genesis 22. This is because some Jewish sources describe Satan telling Sarah that Abraham actually sacrificed Isaac, so she died from a broken heart. Indeed, our Muslim author supports much of his argument with what the rabbis read into the text. How do we know that all this happened simultaneously? From the word came at the beginning of Genesis 23, this verse shows that Abraham was absent when Sarah died. From where did he come, according to Genesis Rabbah? From Mount Moriah. The rabbis simply read something into the text that's not there. But of course, this suits the Muslim author's purpose, so he uses it uncritically. Now, Muslims, I know your God and your prophet love rabbinic legend and folklore, and included it all over the place in the Quran and Hadith. But if you follow this channel, we actually talk a lot about how the rabbis read things into the text that are not there. We've talked about this in great detail in several videos, going right back to the Hebrew text. However, I would encourage you to focus on what the biblical text actually says, instead of reading it through the lens of rabbinic legend. Now, the author defeats his own argument again. In a follow-up article, he gives a couple definitions of a word used for Rebecca, na'ar, or the feminine form na'ara. Here's one of them with infant in all caps. Since he's using the masculine form, you see boy as a possible definition as well. He says, we have seen that the word na'ar further complements the previous articles by describing Rebecca as being a child, just before she was married off to Isaac. You would think at this point it would occur to the author to say, Hmm, I wonder what word is used to describe Isaac in Genesis 22, where I'm trying to argue that he's 36 years old. I better check that before I post this article. Nope. Abraham said to his young men, and that's Na'ar in the plural form, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy, Na'ar, will go over there and worship. But remember, according to the definitions used by our Muslim author, Na'ar means boy or child. So this guy wants to argue for that definition with Rebecca, but then still argue 
that Isaac was 36 to 37 years old on Mount Moriah, when the same word is used to describe both. The author has defeated his own argument again. So far, we've shown that the chronology that Muslims want to assume is unwarranted, based in part on Jewish legend and self-defeating. We've also seen that the Hebrew word used for Isaac describes him as a youth, and this is generally indicated by him being weaned in the previous chapter as well. I initially said these were assumptions, now I've proven them to be so, and very bad assumptions at that. Ah yes, but Rebecca had a nurse. Rebecca's young age is alluded to, typo, in Genesis 24, 57 through 59, but then he quotes 57 through 60. The following verse, typo, corroborates, Eric carried forward, with previous evidences, typo, shown typo, that Rebecca was a very young girl when she got married. She was so young that she needed a nursing woman with her when she was married off. In order for this argument to be valid, it must be necessarily true that the mention of Rebecca's nurse means that she was so young that she needed a nursing woman with her. So, let's test this theory. Rebecca was sent away with her nurse in Genesis 24, and 11 chapters later, Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. So if the mention of Rebecca's nurse means she necessarily had to have a nurse with her, then that means that the age of Rebecca didn't change much from chapters 24 to 35. We can even add to this absurdity. In Genesis 25, Rebecca had Jacob and Esau. This is obviously between the mentions of her nurse in Genesis 24 and 35. So even after having children, Rebecca still needed her nurse. You get the point. Apparently, the mention of Rebecca's nurse doesn't give us any indication about her age. Why is that? On Genesis 24:59, Sarna comments, Hebrew meneket is really a wet nurse. Rebecca could hardly have been in need of such services. In Mesopotamia, the wet nurse frequently had the additional duties of a tarbatum, bringing up the child and acting as a guardian. The Akkadian word tarbatum seems similar to what we might call a tutor. It's easy to see that Deborah's responsibilities would change as Rebecca got older since she stayed with the family. The title nurse is clearly a remnant of her former job description, recalling, of course, Deborah's earlier days with Rebecca. She was obviously a very important member of the family since her name and death are both recorded, as is her legacy title, Nurse, which stayed with her until the day she died. Now, related to this, we have several words Muslims would love to have in the Hebrew text, but they're missing from Rebecca's description. The words yonek and ul are both words in Biblical Hebrew that describe a nursing child. There are some examples for you. There are also other words and modifiers, like katon, which would be small, that would indicate Rebecca was a child. Once again, unfortunately for Muslims, those words do not occur in the text. So, what can we say about Isaac and Rebecca from the text itself? As we heard from the self-defeating argument earlier, the term used of Isaac, na'ar, can mean boy or youth, though the Muslim website we've been referencing only wants to apply that definition to Rebecca and ignore or miss the fact that the same term describes Isaac. A natural reading of the text implies that Isaac was indeed a young lad and certainly not in his 30s, Remember, he was just weaned in the prior chapter in Genesis 21, and it seems unlikely that 30-something years would have passed between Genesis 21 and Genesis 22. Sarna notes that Isaac was about three years old when Ishmael was expelled. He is now, in Genesis 22, old enough to carry a load of firewood and to ask an intelligent question based on experience and observation. It's noteworthy that modern Jewish commentators, like Nahum Sarna, do not follow in the rabbi's footsteps on the interpretation of Isaac and Rebekah's age. Rabbinic legend doesn't work too well in modern scholarship. Turning to Rebekah, several terms are used for her, and we need to take those into account as well. We have Na'ar, or the feminine form, Na'ara, Betula, and Alma. On Na'ar, or more specifically the feminine form, Na'ara, it's interesting to note that at least one lexicon the Muslim website used for the masculine form does not support child as a possible definition for the feminine usage for Rebecca. The Muslim author realizes he can't cite the feminine form of the definition. That would be self-defeating, again. So he justifies using the masculine definition by saying it was later medieval periods that scribes added hey, making na'ar, na'ara, at the end to make a distinction of whether it was speaking about a male or female. Unfortunately, once again, for our Muslim author, the activity he's referring to is proven to have conserved the tradition that the scribes had received. They were not innovators. At best, he is incredibly ignorant 
or perhaps he's deliberately deceptive. Let's look at some other words used for Rebecca. The Hebrew Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament defines Betula as a grown-up girl in Genesis 24:16, while Alma is a girl able to be married. Sometimes this term is used of a young woman until the birth of her first child. So the words Na'ar and Na'ara have different nuances, like most words, and the feminine form, Na'ara, can refer to an unmarried woman. Additionally, Abraham, Abraham's servant, and some of Rebekah's family members call her an Isha, which is the typical Hebrew word for woman or wife. It seems reasonable to conclude, given the various nuances of Na'ar and Na'ara, as well as the fact that multiple terms are used to describe Rebecca, that the intent is to portray her as an ideal wife. That is, she's young, she's marriageable, she's also described as attractive. She's the stereotypical wife for someone like Isaac. If the author wanted to portray her as being in her childhood years, he did a very poor job. Genesis 24 gives us some other indications of her age and maturity as well. She came out of the city with her water jar on her shoulder. That's where she met Abraham's servant. She went down to the spring and filled her jar up with water, at which point Abraham's servant spoke to her. She said she would draw water for his camels as well, and she did. Camels can drink up to 25 gallons each. There were 10 of them, but let's say they weren't very thirsty camels, and they only needed 15 gallons each. That's 150 gallons of water. A standard vessel for drawing water in those days was about 2 gallons. That's 75 trips to the well and back. One gallon of water weighs just over 8 pounds, so accounting for the weight of the vessel and 2 gallons of water volume were about 20 pounds, or 9 kilograms if you prefer. So that's about 75 trips to the well and back again, carrying 20 pounds every return trip. And Rebecca, according to Muslims on my channel, was only 3. You can cut those numbers in half, and it still pushes the bounds of reason. You get the point. Rebecca is also old enough to converse with Abraham's servant and make important decisions on her own. This is an interesting contrast with Aisha, whose consent is not asked for. She's simply taken off the swing set, her dolls are with her, and she goes to Muhammad's house for sex. She's explicitly described as prepubescent and immature in Muslim sources. So let's compare. Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her, described as a girl of immature age, was playing on a swing set with her dolls before she was penetrated. Muslim sources explicitly state that she was prepubescent. No mention of her consent is given. Rebecca conversed intelligently with Abraham's servant. She carried a lot of water. She's described with a variety of terms, none of which require her to be a child, and she's responsible enough to make important decisions on her own. The Discover the Truth website relied on rabbinic interpretation and legend, just like the Quran and Hadith. Its arguments are self-defeating, it has inadequate knowledge and analysis of the Hebrew text, and uses inconsistent methodology. Remember that the phrase after these things has to mean two dramatically different things in the same chapter. In the end, all these arguments from Muslims do is show how desperate they are to try to defend their prophet, who has said over and over and over again to have had sex with a nine-year-old girl, and when they can't defend him, they attack the Bible, and in doing so, they show us that they are just as biblically illiterate as their God and prophet were 1,400 years ago. The more things change, the more they stay the same. See you next time.